I would be confident to say that there's about 85% of my orchid arsenal on this table. Things I require, that I need, that I think I need, I don't need a lot, I need more often than not. Everything that makes this orchid hobby for what's in the pots outside. With the exception of my computer, um, what else? A phone, and all those kinds of things. I am the shelves there, that's obvious. But everything that normally isn't clearly visible in view, I have accumulated and tried to pile on to this table. So, what is all this about? My buckets, very important. I have the pink one for just plain RO water in case I need to flush. Usually it's full. I have my blue one, which is only water and RO water and seaweed, which is normally also full. But for the sake of this video, <laughs> it was kind of impossible. Here is my green bucket with a green handle. That is the fertilizer uh, water with seaweed, which is normally also always ready to go. And down here, underneath, I have the one 45 liter big bucket that I harvest RO water in. I have another bigger one in the kitchen than this, where which is full of RO water at the moment. And I have the 100 liter that you saw in my real estate video outside. So this is my bucket paraphernalia I use on a daily basis. Then I have my little tray here which has lots of little things inside, a strainer for when I use vitamin B1 and I need to strain out the kernels. I have a little tub that has all the little measurement kit gizmos in it, which I save based on what I might need in the future. And then these two from days gone by, now I can have an opportunity before I put everything back to do a little clear up. I used to propagate little cuttings in here but I don't need them anymore so let me just put them up here and then you know the bits and bobs of course I don't need that for orchids but I have some string a cutter plastic cups for seedlings and other little bits of cuttings we have progressed to plastic cups then I have here my scissors I have a set of tweezers and certain little spikes and stems that I cut off of supports that were too long. So I've got them down here. Please don't ask me why. I just thought it would be a good idea to save them, but I can actually throw that away now because I have other options. And besides all that, I have another set of tweezers that I use quite a lot when I pick out my leka. I have my stirring spoon, which used to be a beautiful set for salad tossing. <laughs> so no, that is now, because it's stainless steel, it works perfectly for when I stir my um, fertilizer and then pH and, and uh, TDS it. I have here some shelves uh, for the ceramics setups that I use sometimes for a little bit of calcium. Here I have colimim granules. Let me find a bag for you. Color me bag granules here that I thought might be a good idea one day to use and I haven't used it because it says that it's fertilized. So I'm using this for some other plants that don't need as much water, that don't like to stand in water. So I'm just practicing with this color me and I wanted it in white. So I've not really had any ambition to use it for my orchids because it's not white. I have my ceramis here. This is already recycled ceramis, so none, no original packing here. I have some pumice over here. I have my mobile label maker for my tags. <laughs> my little duster, you know. Oh, sorry. 
And then this is some kind of a um, gauze that goes under carpets that I find very useful. For example, I planted my Stanhopia. I have a very open basket, so I planted this, put this inside the basket so that the lava rock wouldn't fall out as a lining. It's very pliable. But my Stanhopia hasn't bloomed yet, so maybe it didn't work so well. We'll find out soon enough. I have sphagnum moss. I have my sprayers. This is my indoor sprayer when I go around misting. It's just water and seaweed at 5.8. Here I have a sprayer of just water and seaweed for outside, a bigger capacity, also 5.8. And here I have my fertilizer sprayer, also 5.8. These are outside. This is my indoor misting. Then I have a little basket here. These normally stick around in the kitchen, these two. So I have fishing line, I have wire, I have my TDS meter, my pH meter, they're all in here. And normally my clippers go in there as well. Here I have my indoor thermometer. So you can see now it's at 18.5 with 85% humidity. I like it, that little face tells me it's not a good thing. Here's my outdoor thermometer. The sensor is outside, so you can see it's 18 degrees outside and 82% humidity. So we're pretty, on the left with the little house, that's indoor. So we're pretty much even Stevens, which is great. Much needed, I stare at it a lot. It sits in direct line of where I sit. Um, my white wire, my bicarbonate of soda. This is my fertilizer, my MSU. This is my Epsom salts. Here I have a fungicide that I keep here because it just needs little amounts. And then I have my pH probe solution that I sometimes soak it in. The version I have right now doesn't require it, but I have it if I need it. Here's my calcium nitrate. These are all little measuring gizmos that I keep here because I normally mix up my solution in the kitchen. So I have different measuring gizmos to make sure that if I, for example, do the fungicide, I do only get a milliliter or two milliliters, whatever the requirements are. So these normally sit around in the kitchen and make my life much easier because they're readily available on a daily basis. So let's just take these down and go to the next layer. That's my foliage tray. Rubbish, garbage, and things I pick up out of the grow room grow room listen to me as if I have a grow room out of the plants inside that's where I put them until they accumulate here I have oh, come on small lava rock a large lava rock for eventualities here I have some sponge rock still left which is awesome because they don't make it anymore so I have a bag of that then what else what else yeah okay just to give a general overview over here i have kept some bark from a plant in case i need it so far i don't i have a few of these stakes in case i need them that i keep from the phalaenopsis pots i wrap a uh, sellotape around the bottom up to where the humidity goes and then it stays in the pot if I need to support something on a brief, per, uh, not permanent basis. So that's just to replicate what, uh, resemble what I do have in store as well, in case I need it. This is just to represent my pots, in a inner pots and outer mask. So I have several of those, several piles in different sizes. This is something that I do a lot for when I repot. So I keep them because as they're plastic coated, they last forever. Here I have zip ties for when I need to change the zip ties on my shower curtain screen things there. Then I have clamps because if, the van, if it's windy and I don't want the vandas blowing around, I can clamp the hooks to the pole that they're hanging on. So I have a spare set of those. Then down here I have a paintbrush in case I need to get into nooks and crevices. 
with some alcohol that a Q-tip won't allow because they can be quite bulky. I can soak this in alcohol and then just straight into the crevice. That's always the plan with my paintbrush. Then I have a big knife, which is one of those, if I open it and hurt myself, but you know, it's like a switchblade, but in huge for cutting cork, which I bought because some of my mounts are um, cork. Don't want that as a permanent thing, but for now I have this to cut cork. Then I have this little thing here, which is like a tray that hangs, fits over my sink when I'm cleaning, washing, or preparing orchids. I can lay them in this tray and they can drip into the sink and dry, or I just carry them out and put them on the washing stand to dry out. Then of course I have all the little gizmos needed for wire clipping, for root cutting, for leaf cutting. And then of course, like what I use as well, like a placemat, which I cut to size. This is actually for a table where you put your plate on. And I cut the, this to size for my mounts. These are my preferred mounts, but I'm wary of everything growing that way. I also have this little thing here in case I have to do some added humidity to a sick plant. Then here I have bactericide. I have spider mite attack nuking device. I have CalMag. And I have a like a soap wash for other little nasties. I also have my kelp max, which is always in the fridge. This is my insecticide and um, for aphids, etc. This is my alcohol, much needed, also for orchids. And yes, it's at 96. I dilute it down to get it to 70. Muy importante, the canela, cinnamon. I have that. And I have another one in the drawer and there's this one happens to be from the kitchen but I have my own so here I have the silicon that I use as well during the summer only here is my pH down I've used to work with uh, Kana a lot so this one is new it was a bit cheaper but I think it's also not as potent so Kana was pretty powerful so going through that a little bit faster and then in my little spray bottles here, I have alcohol, insecticidal soap mix, hydrogen peroxide. Makes sense, those colors? <laughs> I tried to. The yellow one is for Ciliano. I have a yellow one, but that's for yellow, Tweety Bird yellow, for when I can spray him as he takes his shower and whatever when he comes out. But yeah, so... Mm, possibly I've covered everything, covered everything. I have little saucers in a bag down here. You can see all the saucers I have gathered for my little pots and that, I, that don't have a mask around it. And some extra baskets for Vandas that are now in actually a semi-hydro setup. Pretty much if I can say with some confidence, like apart from all the electronics, this is what I consider important, necessary, I won't do without it, for my orchid hobby. And then there's a little tripod, which I'm trying to practice with before one gets a little bit more fancy. But first I need a, a new uh, software, hardware, a new computer because my editing, my little cranky Mac is a bit slow. But it'll do for now. So if you have any questions about the products that you see here or what I'm using, why I'm using it, then feel free to ask away. I'll be more than happy to go more in depth. Oh yeah, I forgot to hear something, just two little things. These are my drying trays down here. You see I've got sphagnum moss in the bottom there. But these are my drying trays. 
and they, uh, if I recycle lacquer and everything's finished, I put it out here flat, lay it outside so the lacquer can dry. And then uh, there's the sphagnum moss. And there's just one more thing I didn't bring out, should have brought out more important than everything, but you saw my bucket of lacquer that was soaking in the previous video. If you haven't, I'm going to put a tag, tag up, but uh, if you haven't seen that, that, I have a bucket always with lacquer in it. So this is a little bit of a crude, crude little thing, but it was the most sane way to have an overview. <laughs> <laughs> I use the word sane. <laughs> so I hope that this was somewhat interesting to you. And again, if you need any, any additional details, what do I use something for more specifically, please comment away. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye.